Hi, I'm David Soper, one of the technical marketing engineers supporting Cisco Intersight. Today I'll be walking through a overview of the Python SDK and how it can be used for automation of Cisco Intersight device claim and other operations. Before I get into the demo portion, I'll walk through some background material on the Intersight API. If you do a search for Intersight API, you'll find one of our communities.cisco.com pages providing an API overview. On the API overview page, you can learn more about some of the basics of the API, including our in-system API browser, which allows you to see API information and interact with the API. The overview page also goes through how to generate keys within the Intersight portal for remote access and how to use those keys with tools like the Intersight Python SDK. Now I'll walk through some of the usage and installation of the Intersight Python SDK. The Intersight Python SDK is hosted on GitHub. And within the Cisco UCS set of repositories, there is an intersight-python repository, which includes instructions on installing and using the Python SDK. The Python SDK can be installed through Python's package manager, pip, and a command line of pip install and the GitHub repo location can be used to install the SDK. I'll open a terminal and I will create a Python virtual environment. These steps are optional, but will allow me to run through a demo in a virtual environment under Python. Once I've launched that virtual environment, I can run through that command line of installing the SDK. It will install all the requirements listed in the GitHub repo. And after that is done, I'm ready to interact with Intersight through Python. Looking back in GitHub, I can go to the examples directory and there are several scripts here and other settings files for common operations like adding and deleting users and what this demo will walk through which is automated claiming of devices in Intersight using the claim device and some of the other device related files in the Python SDK. Back in the terminal window, I'll change to the examples directory and look at some of the file contents here in my local install of the Python SDK. Python docs or PyDoc can be used to view some of the help information with the different scripts in the directory. And most of the scripts in this examples directory also include example usage. And if I add the help or dash H option, I get more details on usage of the scripts including required and optional parameters. One of the optional parameters for this claim device script is an API params parameter that will allow me to provide information on remote API access. The default is intersight API params.json and I've got an example of this file in this examples directory. Some of the parameters needed for interacting with the intersight API are a base URI, which is my intersight.com slash API location, and then an API key ID taken from the Intersight portal, and a directory path to my API key secret. I'll now take a look at Intersight API remote access and configuration. For this portion, I will log in to the Intersight portal at intersight.com, and I can navigate to the settings menu and manage API keys. This menu shows me the keys currently created and their public API key ID. If I need to create another key, I can navigate to my user profile and click generate new API key. This is where I would get a new key ID and be able to generate my private API key file. Using the information for a specific user's API public and private keys, I can copy the example API params.json file into that default intersight underscore API underscore params.json file and edit as needed for my specific remote key access. For device claim operations, I'll now go through an overview of the device claim process 
and how to interact with each individual device's device connector API. Back in the terminal window, I can use Python documentation to look at my device connector module and some of the classes used to interact with each device type. These are device API operations against each device's connector API, which is separate from the inner site API. Each device exports a device connector API, and those are provided for Hyperflex or HX, the IMC or Integrated Management Controller on standalone UCS servers, and the UCS device connector for UCS manager based devices with UCS manager running in Fabric Interconnect. There are several common methods for device connector interaction within this device connector module and these will be used to configure access for this device back into InnerSight. To understand more on the functionality provided by this device connector module, I will switch back and look at a device instance in UCS Manager. This is a local UCS Manager instance. And for automation, this will not be required, but this will provide some background information on the different methods provided for interacting with the device connector on the device. From the admin menu, if I navigate to the device connector menu, I'll bring up the device connector configuration page. The main functionality provided by the device connector is the ability to set proxy settings as needed to connect out securely to the InterSight portal, the ability to enable or disable the device connector entirely, and access mode settings for the device from the device for read-only or allowing control. In this example, I currently have a network connectivity error. This device requires proxy settings which have not yet been set up, so it is not able to reach intersight.com. But I'll walk through how to automate that process, along with automation of the overall claim process, including the ability to enable the device connector remotely and change access mode as needed. Back in a terminal window, the device connector module provides methods to enable the connector matching what's done in the device connector UI to configure a proxy if needed in the device's environment to configure the access mode as read only or allowing control and to get claim information for automated claim using both device information and the remote inner site API. Now I'll walk through automation of the device claim process. For the automation portion, I will be automating with Ansible. This is not required, but the claim device Python script does support running from Ansible, which is written in Python. And Ansible provides many facilities for organizing data. First, I'll take a look at an example inventory file and how data is organized within Ansible. This example inventory file will need to be customized for each user's specific environment it does show an example of how hosts can be organized into groups, variables, and other things shared across those groups. And Ansible provides a good framework for both that data organization and automation portion on top of Python. When customizing for an environment, I will copy the example inventory file over to a modified inventory file that can be used for a specific environment. Now I can edit the customized inventory file already made a couple edits within this file and I will be adding a new line for a new host I have. This file is organized into different groups representing different data centers I'm running in and has information for specific hosts within each of those data center environments. Within my SJC07 group I already have one existing server and now I will add a second server which I want to claim within this environment. The parameters that I need to provide in this file include hostname, IPs, device types covering HX, UCSM, or IMC. Once the inventory is in place, I'll take a look at an example playbook, my example underscore claim dot YAML file as an Ansible playbook. This playbook will operate upon the hosts in that UCS host group. I have some common variables defined 
and at the bottom I will run a script which is my claim device.python script. Parameters files are pulled in as an argument to the script. Those are defaulted in this playbook. My devices information with the dash D option is also passed in. Several variables are defaulted. They can be overridden from the inventory file or other sources. In this case, the defaults are no proxy settings and read only as false, which allows control of the device. Once all those variables are in place with an Ansible, I create a JSON object with my access information covering the host name, username, password, device type, proxy information, and my read-only settings for that device connector's access mode. With the example claim being parameterized entirely outside of the playbook, I can use that playbook as is. And I'll take a look at my Ansible version here, running 2.4. And I can now run an Ansible playbook, provide the inventory file, the claim playbook, example underscore claim dot yaml. When I run that, I get some information on which hosts are being set for proxy settings, which hosts are being set for access mode, and then I define that JSON object passed into the claim script, and finally the tasks run to actually claim devices. Going back into the local instance, I can refresh the device connector, and I see that his access mode has been changed to read-only, and the connection is now claimed within the Intersight portal. Switching over to the Intersight portal, I can navigate to the Devices menu, and I can view the claimed time of devices. And I can sort that claimed time to pick up my newly added UCS Manager device, CC7 UCS-13, which was claimed just a minute ago within the Intersight portal. We've also provided an examples underscore devices.json file which can be passed directly with the dash D command line for claiming devices just in the Python script. The same information as provided in the Ansible inventory file can be provided in this file as an alternate method without Ansible. And we've got device type, host name, password, etc. directly device by device in a list of objects provided in this JSON file. That concludes this demo of automating Intersight device claim with Python, an example of how to use some of the underlying modules and scripts with Ansible for simplified data management and parallel operations against many hosts. For more information, please visit the following websites, including communities.cisco.com. Thank you.